as much as I hate to mute old Spotify. We gotta do it. Why? Why, you ask? Because it's time. It is time to get down to business chat. Season 19, as it has been coined, season 19 is upon us. We are here. We are good to go. We are ready to find out if said team, the lovely name Trinidad and Tobago Goonfish, if season 19 is our year. Because we are drastically running out of time. <sighs> drastically running out of time. <laughs> Again, uh, we don't currently have our other goalie because teams just aren't looking to make trades, apparently. But the Lions this year, pretty similar to what they were last year. The top six is exactly the same with Ekman Niedermeyer and Lawrence Legacy. Ariel Legacy with Cameron Carlton. And now 35-year-old, soon-to-be 36-year-old Joe Byer. He is going to retire at any moment. And I'm, I'm scared. We're actually on season 20. Season 20 it is! <laughs> season 19, season 20. Who needs math? The big question this year. Malkin, Suhonen, Fedorov. What can those three do now that we have a little bit more of a focus on them? Our bottom six depth took a hit in terms of overall. But Malkin's been off to a good start. Suhonen's been off to a good start. So I'm hopeful... Again, the defense is exactly the same as it's been for years. And then goaltending-wise, right now it's Barlow and Bird because we do not have the money to sign Rantanen. And hopefully, maybe someday, hopefully, maybe, possibly, potentially, we are going to be able to get those deals done. Of course, we tried to get them done at the end of last night, and that didn't work. Even on easy trade difficulty. So for the moment, we're going to see what Barlow and Bird can do. And we'll still try to sign Rantanen before the December 1st update. Now, Clarence McLeod, who was a coach of ours for a while, just got fired by the Blue Jackets Todd Richards style. Who needs to give the man 10 games? Bobrovsky can't make a save. Fire the guy. Fire the guy. Oh, boy. Give me one second here, by the way. Give me a one second, by the way. There we go. All right, we're good. Draft class, I hope we never have to worry about. <laughs> In a serious way. Let's see, what's it gonna be? Five, three, and one through our first nine games. Ekman is a machine. Eh, nine games, and we can't overreact to uh we can't overreact to that, can we? Cody, what's going on, buddy? Let's okay, okay, let's uh let's try to work out a trade. <laughs> I I want my safety blanket back, okay? Criticize me if you will. I want my safety you know, my safety blanket back if I can get it. So Byzantine and Dansk, please leave this team, please. I am begging you, go away, so I can sign my goalie, please. This would be season 19. Son of a bitch! Is it season 19? Is it season 20? I can't trust anybody in the chat. It's fine. Colorado, please. Please, 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 please. Oh, boy. We have to try to pull this trade off. A seventh round pick next year. I will give you my seventh. Shout out to the BMO. What's going on? Please, God, please tell me you just brought the good luck by letting this trade go through. All right. <laughs> How about this one? I hate everything. Why can I not get rid of these two players to free up cap space? Thank you for the raid, by the way, though. I hope your stream went well, and it'll be great. It'll be great. Oh, good for you! I'm guessing it's Nordette as well. Thank you, uh... Thank you for the follow. Oh, 
Oh, good for you! Cobra's Bolts, thank you both. Oh, good Welcome to for me you. racking my brain on how to figure out how to navigate this horrific trade AI. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. Did I try the trade finder? We'll try it! We'll try it. It'll be fine. It'll it'll be fine. It'll all It'll all work out, I'm sure. Oh what a nightmare. Nope, not Advocator. Dance, please. Nobody wants him! Byzantine. Nobody wants him. <laughs> We literally can't sign that other goalie. He's gonna stay in RFA for the entire year. Unless his price drops. To below 3.8 million. I literally can't sign him. I'll offer you 3.8 million, buddy. Come on down. Or you're pretty much not gonna play this year. Is what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at here. Let's see what we can do. The year is 2039. Goons are winning. Trades are meaningless. And the game might break at some point. Might break. Danny, what's going on, buddy? I hope you are well. It is good to see you. Talixon is not still on the team, I don't believe. I think I got rid of him. Yeah, I got rid of Talixon to free up cap space. The only other option is to get rid of, like, Gregor or Falk. Both of whom are doing well so far this season. It's just unbelievable that I can't move these two players on decent contracts on expiring deals. They're top four defensemen. But by modifying your block, do you directly change people offer? No, because it was an open block. You can hit left bumper to just completely ignore your trade block and have the AI offer whatever they want to offer you instead of trying to follow your trade block. And that's what I attempted. All right, let's let's uh, let's try this again. Third round pick. How about a third rounder next year, Vegas? Let's uh, let's make this happen. I will, I will still swap those third rounders with you. I will also give you nobody. What about Hill? I just... All right. No, we're, we're just screwed, man. We're screwed. Screwed, screwed, screwed. <sighs> All right. Well, let's see what we can do. Uh, we have a month to try and work something out with Rantanen. Otherwise, he sits out for the entire year. And if our goaltending keeps struggling the way it has so far, Rantanen rejects, no surprise. If our goaltending keeps struggling the way that it has, uh, we are not exactly going to be President's Trophy candidates. We're 10-4-3, and three, which isn't bad, but nothing overly special. We're uh, the second best team in our division right now. Ekman's an absolute machine. Has Rantanen budged at all? Has Rantanen budged on his asking price at all? Sir. He's down to 4.3. He's getting antsy. He's getting antsy. We might have a shot here. Been binging the NCAA series on YouTube and I love it. Ted, thank you. I've had fun with that. I've had fun with that series for sure. Come on, Rantanen. Come on, Dad. Come on, man. You're running out of time. You have a week and a half to accept an offer or you're sitting out for the entire season. And definitely not coming back next year is what we're looking at. He's down to four. Oh, he keeps dropping. Little by little, he keeps dropping his asking price. <laughs> oh, I hate this. All right. Uh, let's sim up to this Kings game. I'm Yes, thank you. I'm well aware that it's 10 days away. Thank you. Thank you, game, for that great reminder. I, God, what would I do? <laughs> what would I do without this game's reminders, you know? Just accept the deal, please. Uh, let's play the Kings. We win one nothing. Wow, the Oilers are awful. We beat them too. He still rejected. Yikes. Rantanen. He's down to 4.1. This is going to go right down to the wire. Right down to the wire. <laughs> 
Oh god, it's when we play Dallas too. Tampa's not that good. Oh boy, this is it. He rejected. I think we're screwed. <laughs> I think we're screwed. He didn't want to sign the deal. Fuck him. <laughs> we're in first place without him. He's out for the year. It's official. It's a done deal. Barlow's our guy. Someone who actually wanted to be on the team. Will this cost us a Stanley Cup? Maybe not, because Nolan Barlow has uh, performed quite well. Quite well this season. So, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Billy Bird's been a bit rough as the backup. But we do have Zanata or Sean Cardwell that we could call up, worst case scenario. Rantanen will sit at home. I mean, he initially wanted $14 million, so you can understand why he wouldn't want to accept less than four. Ekman's in almost a goal per game. Eat your heart out, Austin Matthews. Niedermeyer's doing well. Legacy's been okay. Other Legacy's done well. Carlton's done well. Joey Byers crushing it. Ooh, Malkin had two goals in his first two games, and he is stru oh, okay. Well, the fourth line's been okay. Shout out to Ted for that two-month prime sub. So. You'll love to see that. Teddy, thank you. All right, Vladimir Malkin. We're going to swap you for one Sergei Fedorov, and we're going to see what happens. Barlow turns into a pumpkin during the playoffs. I mean, let's be honest, that probably will happen, but for the moment, we're going to go with him. Rantanen didn't want to be here. The AIs didn't want to make these trades. It is what it is. Let's see how we do through the month of December. He had a chance. That was 200 k less than his asking price, and he still rejected. Fuck him. He didn't want to be here. So we won't be here. Did I win the cup? No. <laughs> oh, but we might just win it this season. Holy hell. I said we weren't going to win 50 games. Whew. 26, 6, and 5. We are the kings of the regular season. We are the early 2010 Vancouver Canucks. Love it. Oh, man. 57 points, which is second best in the NHL behind the Arizona Coyotes. Ekman is a machine. Good God. Niedermeyer is a machine. Legacy is okay. Other Legacy is okay. Joey Byer has 26 goals. <laughs> One more 50-goal season for Joe. Chat. I need, I need all the hope. I need all the optimism. I need all the energy. Can Joe Byer hit 50 at 35 to 36 years old? Can Joe Byer hit 50? He's an automatic 30 goal scorer every single season of his career. Will Joey Byer hit 50? He's more than halfway there in less than half a season. Uh, popcorn chicken, we have already re-signed some people uh, heading into the season, so we have taken advantage of the early contracts for once. Let's see how Fedorov's doing. So 15 points for Fedorov's not bad. So our depth scoring has taken a bit of a hit. They're doing better now that we uh, dropped Malkin. Defensively, we're looking okay. Barlow is the man. I do wonder about Billy Bird as the backup. I just don't know if I trust Sonata yet. We'll give Billy a little bit more time. God damn. Let's actually take a look at Yield Record Book here. We'll go NHL history. So most goals, I mean, Obi scored over a thousand, then there's Evgeny Malkin, McDavid, and Matthews. Joe Byer will hit the top five if he scores 814 goals 814 
is what he needs. He currently stands at 733. He's going to have to play a little bit longer. But Joe Byer could easily be a top five goal scorer in NHL history. Chris dropping the five months. It is good to see you, Seth. Thank you for that. How have you been? Oh, man. Still a little bit worried about some aspects of the bottom six. We knew we'd take a hit there in terms of talent. Well, let's see what happens through the month of January. I still kind of hate that we're without Rantanen, but hey. It's Nolan Barlow's team now. It's the Oilers fire their head coach. I'm not surprised. They had a terrible record when we last played them. So we finally lose to Vegas. And then we just keep winning. Until we lose to Florida. Guys, this record's insane. 37. 7. And 6. It appears as though we're going to have another President's Trophy in our trophy cabinet. <sighs> it's just a matter of what happens next. We are on 80 points by game 50. 8 points clear of the Coyotes. Ekman has 44 goals in 50 games. Oh my god. I mean, Ekman... Ekman could very well hit the same pace he had last year, which is insanity. Niedermeyer has 34 goals. Crazy. Legacy's been great. Legacy's been great. Carlton's still been amazing. Joe Byer uh, slowed down a little bit. He still has 29 goals. And that third line looks a lot better with Fedorov, Grigor, and Suhanen. Malkin, Christensen, and Falk have been pretty good. Everything's good there on defense. Barlow's at a 9.35, Bird at a 9.13. <sighs> Let's keep going. I don't know how long it's going to take to sim through this regular season. We're looking pretty damn good. We're looking pretty damn good. We go to March 1st. We are just... Dest Look at this. Look at the goals scored per game. Holy crap. Like, Tampa gave us a bit of trouble. Like, this is unreal how many goals we're scoring per game. What the hell is our average right now? Ekman has 50 goals in 54 games. What the hell is our team average? We're averaging... Oh, my... We're averaging over four goals a game. Again. We are the only team to score over 220 goals. Or over 191 goals, I guess. The only team to score over 200 goals. We have 224 goals as a team. I don't know if I've ever seen... Like, look at this. Look at this differential. And we have the best goals against average. By far. This is unreal. We are going to go down as the greatest regular season team to never win a Stanley Cup. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh my god. Into March we go beyond the deadline. Beat Dallas, crush Montreal, crush Washington. We actually got pooped on by Detroit. Just lost two out of three. A few more losses there to end the month, but we head into March at 47, 10, and 6. We have already clinched the playoff spot 63 games into the season. We have already clinched a playoff spot. That has to be the earliest I have ever seen someone clinch a playoff spot. Holy hell, dude. That's insane. That is absolute insanity that we already clinched a playoff spot. With a month to go. 47, 10, and 6. We are in a astonishing amount of points ahead of Vancouver, who are 10 points ahead of Anaheim. We are in the North Division. It's so incredibly weak. Edmonton has 28 points. Poor Edmonton. We're the best team in the league by 11 points. There is a bigger gap 
between the top two teams in the league than there is between the bottom two teams in the league. This is unreal. This is unreal. Still averaging uh, 4 one, three goals, 4 per game. Goals against average has gone up a little bit, but we're still the best there. 33% power play, by far the best in the league. 87% penalty kill, by far the best. I can't wait for us to lose. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. I cannot, cannot wait. Cannot wait for us to lose in the playoffs. It's going to be great. Oh boy. Let's see let's see what we have for point totals here. I mean we know Ekman's on 57 goals in 63 games. He's gonna beat last year's point total and probably last year's goal total. Niedermeyer has do we have a 45 goal score and a 57 goal score on the same line. Joe Beyer has 34 goals. Over 1,500 points for Joe Beyer in his career. He's just missing a ring. That's all he's missing. He just needs a freaking ring, man. That's all he needs. That's all he needs. Let's keep going. Actually, really quickly, I want to check Billy Bird. He's at a 9.08. Barlow's at a 9.33. I don't think I'd be doing this team, you know, right by not calling up Zanata and at least seeing, although he would be affected by waivers. But at least not seeing if this guy could be our backup this year. I know it might mess with the AHL goalies, but I don't really care about the AHL goaltenders. I'm calling him up. We need to, He's the backup goalie. We need to see if he can do better than Billy Bird. That way we know who we're going to rely upon in the case that somehow... By, I mean, Barlow can't even get hurt, but... I don't care. I want to see if he's the guy. Because if Barlow struggles, I can't place my hopes on Rantanen now, can I? Because somebody didn't want to sign the contract. Couple losses in a row. 55, 12, and 6. Ekman has 65 goals and 113 points. Crazy. Yeah, Zanata has an 889. Okay, hey, we got our answer. It's Billy Bird as the backup. We had to give him a chance. I can send Zanata down. Uh, look at Marcus Pedersen, by the way. <laughs> I think he liked that we called up Zanata. I think he does. We beat the Lightning's record. Of course we did. And now we're going to extend it. <sighs> can we get 60 wins in a season? We have 59 in a season before. Three wins away. Will we hit 60? Three games left to hit 60. We're actually losing a few games in a row now. All right, boys, take your foot off the gas, for God's sakes. That's our first uh, three-game losing streak all year. Why does this game refuse to let us hit 60 wins? you got to be kidding me. We're hitting 60, damn it. Come on. First period. There we go. Ekman Niedermeyer. There it is. 60 goals. 60 goals? I mean, certainly 60 goals for Ekman. 60 wins for the Goons. 60. 15 and 7 on the season. We are going to get smoked in the playoffs. Also, Ekman scored 69 goals. So that's... That's pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, we haven't uh, we haven't hit this button in a while. Where is it at? Nice. There we go. There we go. 
Let us take a look at some point totals here, shall we? 127 points. Buffalo had 58 wins, so look out for Buffalo. Worst team in the league had to have been Edmonton. 35 points. I put up almost 100 more points than the Oilers. That's absurd. Still finished with over four goals, four per game. One of three teams to score over 300, and we scored 329. Goals against average of the 235 was the lowest in the league. Best offense, best defense. 33% power play, best in the league. Our penalty kill, best in the league. 11 shorties as a team, the Coyotes had 12. 33-7-1 at home. In terms of points, normally we look from there. I want to look from the line screen, though. There's obviously a slight spoiler. Ekman. Not bad for the 68th overall pick. A career high. 122 points. He has broken the 1,000 point mark in the playoffs. And a new career high of 69 goals at 33 games played. Needless to say, Matthias Ekman's a Channel Hall of Famer as well. I mean, this, in terms of star caliber players, in terms of star caliber players, I don't know if we have ever had an abundance of them like we do in this series. Like, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And if he can do this again in the playoffs, we're going to be okay. Andrew Niedermeyer scored 57 goals. A new career high for him. He is approaching 1,000 games and 1,000 points. He has 107 points this year. The dynamic duo of Matthias Ekman and Andrew Niedermeyer. Unreal. And Lawrence Legacy, the defenseman turned forward. A new career high of 72 points, a plus 53 the legacy of legacies continuing with, uh, yeah, with, with good assist numbers. Jesus. Top two defensemen. I'm playing him as a forward. You love to see it. Second line, Uriel Legacy. Good Lord. 79 points this year. Not quite as high as last year. Look at those numbers. 53 goals, 494 assists. Absolutely absurd. He took 64 shots last year, 66 this year. The man just doesn't shoot the puck. It's crazy. He needs to show up in the playoffs, though. He's got to do better than that if we're going to have a chance. Cameron Carlton, two years ago, people said booed him. Since then, 78 points and 86 points. It's his second ever 86-point season. We know he's a playoff performer when we go deep into the playoffs. Damn. That man took less shots than Ekman had goals, true. And then, the man, the myth, the legend. His pace really slowed down. He had 26 goals before the halfway point. He finishes with 40. An 85-point season for Joey. Still took almost 300 shots. 747 goals for the now 36-year-old. Over 1,500 points and 1,000 pims on the dot. Gotta love it. I mean, Carlton and... Uh, I know, guys, obviously, Byers regressing. He's 36. What'd you expect? It's to be expected. Third line, Sergei Fedorov in his rookie year. 41 points on the third line. 20 goals. Might have a rookie of the year candidate there. Cody Gregor. 
I don't know if I trust Cody in the playoffs, guys, but he did put up 52 points. And Avesa Suhanen, 51 points as a rookie. Good lord. I know he had power play time, but damn. Those two rookies looking good. I mean, the only argument you could make would be to drop Carlton to try and get Bayer to shoot more, but I'm not messing up that third line. Like, the move would be to bump up Suhanen, and it wouldn't work anyway. Fourth line, uh, Vladimir Malkin, 30-point season on the fourth line, which is still pretty good. Someone who's finally back in the lineup after six years. Uh, Jason Christensen with a decent 31 points. He had 37 last year. And Jose Falk, another 30-point season. This team is insane. Crystal Pepsi, what is going on, buddy? Buddy, buddy, buddy. Defensively, Lewis Johnson. I mean, over 900 games now. Never much of a great goal scorer, but gets some assists every year. Plus, minus is crazy. Always takes penalty minutes. Abdulkader, 26 points. A new career high for Ernie Abdulkader in goals and points. Plus 41. Not bad. Second pairing, Robert Lilia. Again, good for 20 points pretty much every year. Fritz, how are you, buddy? Michael Zagrappin, again, good for 20 points pretty much every year. Now a third pair, Vladimir Saprikin, a little bit less, but the plus-minus is still great. He broke 100 points this year. And Eve Devereaux, never much of a great point-getter, but solid, solid, solid. We could not afford to re-sign Rantanen, so what happens? We turn it over to Nolan Barlow. who in his first year as a starter finishes with a 930 save percentage with a 205 goals against average, seven shutouts, 49, nine and six. When we drafted Barlow, we said, if this guy isn't the guy, then nobody is the guy. It's pretty much what we were looking like. Crazy. And then Billy Bird as the backup had a 907. He had 915 the last time he was more of a backup, so mm. career 904. I don't trust Billy Bird at all. It's Nolan Barlow or bust. And again, George Zanata didn't get it done as the backup. Let's go take a look at the around the league comparisons here. I'll probably send Zanata back down to the AHL. Cardwell's got a 921. Pedersen's got a 939. Jesus Christ. 907's fine for a backup. Eh, not, not in front of this team. I'm sorry. No no carry price standards where it's like, well, behind this team, it's actually... No. No, he needed to be better. He needed to be better to hold down that spot. Sorry. Around the league. Ekman. Led the way in scoring. 122 points. A couple Islanders up there. Andrew Niedermeyer was up there. And of course, just a bunch of dudes who could have been members of this team. 99 assists. Uh, a bunch of dudes who could have been a member of this team in a different reality. Ekman led the way in terms of goal scoring. Niedermeyer was third. Bunch of 50 goal scorers. Jesus. The assist leader was pretty obvious. Plus minus, Ekman was the best. <laughs> Penalty Minute King was Alexi in Montreal. Pair bag. Okay. No shots, Ekman. <laughs> 417 shots and he's shot 16%. Ekman's unreal. Most time on ice. Wasn't quite there, most face-offs won. Carpenter, God, I wish we had that guy. Defensively, most points went to Jose Zinger in Tampa. Lawrence Legacy was technically second. He might still get the Vesna, even though we play him at forward. Nilsson again led the way for goals from defensemen, because that guy in Montreal is just nuts. For the goalies, Barlow won the most games. Didn't have the most shutouts. He was tied for third with Philly's goalie. Save percentage-wise, it's, it's Barlow. If they somehow give it to Evan Young, I'm going to be pissed. Like, clearly it's Barlow for the Vesna. Clearly. I might have said Norris for uh, 
Vesna for here instead of Norris. Hey, guess what? I misspeak sometimes. Uh, hey, we did not win Rookie of the Year. It's going to go to Amari Brooks in L.A. He was number one, wasn't he? He is number one. Suhanim was up there, though. Not bad. Not bad. I don't know why people always look for goalie goals. There were two goalie goals this year, though. Jalen Bengoa and Pat Hill. Shout out to two goalie goals this season. And for the hell of it, the fight leader. 39 fights, Mary Novak. Jesus Christ. What the hell is going on with this league? Wasn't Barlow considered a rookie? Uh, no. Last year was technically his rookie year. I guess he played enough, uh, enough games. This team is stacked. Absolutely stacked. And in the first round, we already know who we're playing. It's the Dallas Stars. We have never played the Dallas Stars. Vandal, what's up? Ask away. I miss Tom Milson on the caps. I thought you guys were memeing. Hold on. I thought you were memeing. Is there really a dude named Tom Milson? Jesus Christ. I thought you were memeing! Well, that's incredible, isn't it? That's just incredible. This league is all goals and fights. I'm gonna like 2040. 2040, we say, fuck you, head trauma. We go back to the 80s, except it's even more dangerous. Shout out to Tom Milson. The memes really do write themselves. In the first round... We get to play the Dallas Stars. And yeah, we're doing it right now. We're doing it right now. At least the first round. Not committing to the entire cup run because I want to get a decent amount of 2K10 in there tonight. But we are doing the first round here tonight. We know how good this team is. We're not changing anything about the lines. We're just going to run with it. The only thing that we have to do to send Zanata back down to the AHL since they don't have to worry about waivers anymore. And that'll hopefully give a boost to a KHL team whose, uh, whose points I meant to look at, to be honest. But we'll take a look at that. KHL, KHL. Can I misspeak for once without being corrected? Jesus. Jesus. AHL, KHL, whatever the fuck. Send him to a league that isn't on our team. I wish I could send him to Russia, but I can't. Prime it. There's 25 year franchise month, initial 19. Now I finish actually want to recreate the team that I finish with and resume from there in a new franchise month. Should I stay in 19 and recreate them in 21? Probably recreate them in 21. Probably recreate them in 21. That'd be more fun. Anyway, yeah, we won 59 games there. I am aware I called the Norris the Vesna too. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I did three and a half hours worth of podcasting earlier. I get into Twitter fights. I'm a busy boy. I'm tired. What do you want from me? I'm just a man. I run myself ragged, make content for you people to put food in my dog's bowl. And all I do is get criticized. I'm going to cancel all of you. I'm going to cancel all of you. Because I'm far too... Itchy to just ruin people... Itchy trigger finger to ruin people's lives. You're all canceled. That's what the internet tells me, right? We're all just too sensitive. So I'm going to cancel all of you because I'm sensitive. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Dallas. <laughs> the Dallas Stars. We got some things to look up with the Dallas Stars, of course. First and foremost, again, the worst team in the list. We, of course, have the best offense. They 
We're at a 295. Goals against average. All right, so defensively they're solid. It's just we have a gigantic offensive edge. A significantly better power play. And uh, their penalty kill actually kind of sucks. In theory, if the play continues at the level that it was, we should, should be able to steamroll these guys. Hopefully. Now, we don't know what this roster looks like, but... Again, the uh, the theory is that this is going to be an easy win, but this is also an EA Sports game. The Dabla Stars. Oh my god, if we don't crush them. We have beaten teams that are so much better than this. Ronnie Cuff. Good old Ronnie Cuff. Good shooting category, at least. Okay, you got 85 overall, Ronnie Cuff. 87 overall, Cyrus McGuire, and 89 overall, Raphael McPherson. We'll check their points in a minute. Second line, Jakob Yaskin, Tommy Salmalainen, Braxton McLean, Jalen Brower, Uriel Yonkman. What's with the Uriels? So many Uriels. It's ridiculous. Ron Murphy, Roger Muir, Raphael Renaud, and Kip Ekblad. Son of Aaron. The defense, Essa Hevenen and Julius Esch. Jason Krogh, he's back. Thrasher's great. Timothy Vishnevsky, Mikhail Leeson, and Timothy DeKaiser. Another son of a legend. I mean, it's not a bad team. They also have a 91 overall defenseman. Goalie-wise. Thank God he's not the starter. He's back, everybody. He's back. It's Will Goalie. But he is the backup to Ian Nielsen. So for anyone who was wondering how good Will Goalie ended up being, he ended up being an 82. Which means, yes, he was going to be good enough to win a cup, probably. Should I have drafted him? Probably. But it is what it is. I don't remember who I took instead of Will Goalie, though. Uh, really quickly, Dallas's points from the regular season... Dallas's points from the regular season. What do we got? Alright, so McPherson and McGuire are solid. They don't really have superstar level scoring outside of those two. McGuire's the main man, McPherson's the setup guy. They have some good depth scoring, but they certainly don't have the superstar talent that we do. They're not bad, that's for sure. Defensively, Hevenin's unreal. It drops off a bit from there. Quite a bit in some circumstances. A 9-10 for Nielsen, a 9-24 for Goalie. I mean, this should be this should be a massacre in our favor. But we know it doesn't work that way. This should be a massacre in our favor. Now, the one thing that was mentioned in chat, and don't think I didn't notice was the idea of being big old bitches. Big old bitches. Don't try to cancel me because I called someone a bitch. Um, but yeah, to calendar sim games and then only jump in to the games that are elimination games. Uh, Mama ain't raised no bitch. We sim every game. In depth, if it's cost us cups under, you know, the circumstances of just weird EA-ness. Can I trademark EA-ness? I'll get back to you on that. We're going for it. We sink or swim with the in-depth sim. That's just what we do. In terms of the ratings. In terms of the ratings. 93, 97, and an 86 as Ace Boy hits us up with the 26 months on a tier 2 Ace Boy. Thank you for keeping up that sub. We love you. It is good to see you. I hope you have been well despite your inability to be here. We still love you. Dallas is an 87, an 83, and an 83. God help me if we lose this. 
God help me if we lose this. It's ridiculous. Also, I'm trying not to be petty on Twitter. I know, it's pretty difficult for me to do. I'll just say the people that complain about cancel culture complain more than the people that they're complaining about. Guys, it's time for game one. We jump into the sim, damn it. We've made it to two Stanley Cups. You could have won two Stanley Cups if you just calendar simmed. Maybe. But we'll never know now, will we? Game one. First period. Let us roll. Goal to piece isn't ideal. Andrew Niedermeyer on the power play. Our number one target for this series was to shut down McGuire. And uh, we can't. And we can't. Second period. Uh huh. Three unanswered goals for Dallas in the course of six minutes. McPherson, McPherson, and Murphy. And then we get three unanswered goals in the case of five minutes or so with Niedermeyer, Niedermeyer, Suhanen. Four goals apiece. Not exactly the playoff debut that I was looking for with Barlow. But this is still a winnable game. Maybe we should have calendar simmed. Legacy scores shorthanded. It's 5-4. to four. Falk scores at 6-4. to four. Trade Falk, they said. Cancel. Malkin makes it 7-4. to four. Holy crap. <laughs> Why don't you bring in goalie? When Uriel Legacy scores, you know shit screwed up. 7-4. to four. We scored 6 unanswered goals. Six unanswered. We were trailing four to one in that game. Huh. That is one of the strangest playoff games I think I've ever seen. The vast dude. Somehow Joe Byer didn't have a point in that one. Fourth line had themselves a day. Billy Bird. Billy Bird won us that game. Barlow was pulled. And Billy Bird took that big wing and slammed that door shut. Interesting. Hell of a time for Barlow to have his worst game of the season. We go to game two. We are up one to nothing. Barlow stays, but I am now scared. First period. Oh, Barlow, no. No, 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 it was not the, no. Come on. Oh, man, are you kidding me? He had a 9.30 in the regular season. Fanboy! The man was a fanboy! Twenty-seven months on the Prime Sub. Phil, how are you, buddy? Just good to see you. I hope you have been well. Second period after those two goals from Jaskin. We tie. <laughs> Ekman on the power play and Sergei Fedorov. Doubled him up in shots. We are tied on the board. Good Lord. We go to the third. This is anybody's game. These have been very unpredictable. Ekman scores again. That is pretty predictable that Ekman scores. We're up 3 2. Our play for Dallas goes to waste. Six minutes left. Carlton makes it four. Suhanen makes it five. And we are up two to nothing in this series. Two to nothing in this series. A 5-2 victory over Dallas, Ekman, Carlton, and Suhonen leading the way. Legacy, Gregor, also with two points in that one. Barlow posted a 9-17. It's not ideal. He probably has like an 8-50 or something like that. I gotta see what that save percentage is. 
I am uh, kind of missing the option of ranting in right now. 846, I was pretty close. <laughs> oh my god. An 846. He had a 930 in the regular season. Holy hell. Ackerman has four points in two games. It's not ideal, but we're getting the job done. We go to game three in Dallas. Not changing a dang thing. Uh, Ekman scores before I can even pause. Buyer scores. It, it says simulation pause, but we're scoring every 30 seconds. What the fuck? Dude, I paused the sim and they just said, nope, we're scoring goals. Deal with it. <laughs> Up three to nothing in a minute and nine seconds. Holy shit. What the hell was- how? What have I done? <laughs> Ekman, Byer, Suhanen. 3 nothing to the goons. Second period. Can I break the game again? Let's quick sim it. 5 nothing goons. Ekman and Suhanen on goalie. We go to the third, up by 5. One win away from going to the second round. McGuire scores on the power play. It's 5-1. I know, right? It's time to break out the meme. Do I still even have it? I do. No! I accidentally got rid of kill. I think I accidentally got rid of kill. 5-1 is your final. God damn it. So yeah, Sox, fun fact, I deleted stuff out of a folder and I think Kill was one of them. Hold on. I'm looking for it. I might still have it. It might just be in the trash. Aha! It was in the trash! The problem is it's gonna be loud as hell. Maybe. Alright, hold on. Properties. Down. Where is it? I can't find it. Where is it? I'm so confused. It's not even worth it for the meme. The joke is passed. Kill! There we go. That sums it up well. Kill! 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 Yes! There we go. That sums up that game. Three to nothing. The series lead for the Trinidad. And Tobago Goonfish, Mr. Barlow, returns to form. And this team cannot stop scoring goals. Unbelievable. Barlow has shrugged off the pre, uh, or you know, the, the early, the early jitters to this series. And we are just absolutely crushing it. 17 goals in three games for this team. One win away from taking on either Vancouver or Anaheim, two teams we've never played before in the second round. I mean, Ekman has six points. Niedermeyer has six points. That second line's been a little bit quiet, but at least Legacy's scoring. Gregor has five assists in three games. Suhanen has four goals. Barlow now up to a 9.06. It's game four. Can we end this first round matchup in rather convincing fashion? First period, two to one Dallas. Renaud on the power play. Ekman on the power play. McGuire gets one back. We haven't been able to shut down McGuire at all. It is pretty concerning. Second period, 4-3. Gregor, then Muir. Ekman and Suhanen again. Four to three. Heading into the third period. Polly Russ, what's going on? Can we close out this series? Unsuccessful power play for Dallas. Another power play for Dallas. This one also fails. Halfway through the third. Eight minutes to go. Can Dallas tie it? The answer 
is no. Cameron Carlton seals the deal. Ekman with an empty netter just to add salt to the wound. 6-3 to three is your final score. And the Goons sweep the Dallas Stars in round one. A 60-win team that just wipes their hands of the eighth seed. You'll love to see it. Imagine that in NHL 21. You'll love to see it. Ekman just destroying worlds right now. And a 9.27 for Barlow. Break the brooms out, boys. That series is over. 23 goals. No, 24 goals, right? Yeah, it was 17 plus. Oh, yeah, 23 goals. For a second, I wasn't sure if it was 17 or 18. 23 goals there in four games. Ekman had 9.7 goals. <sighs> Quick maths, indeed. Uh, we're averaging almost six goals. <laughs> that is the highest goals four per game I've ever seen through four games of a playoff series. Holy cow. Just, my God. And that's the lowest. Way to go, Detroit. That is insanity. Only three of them were on the power play, too. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We easily dispatch of Dallas. Look at these numbers. Suhanen as a 24-year-old rookie. Craziness. Joe Byer had a respectable three points in four games. But he was outscored by six different people. Every person on this team had at least a point. Only one person didn't score a goal in that first round, and that was Jason Christensen. Defensively, uh, Lawrence Legacy had four points. I guess he was also the only other forward who did not have a goal. Technically, none of our defensemen had a goal. Barlow finished with a 9-13. We have some concerns for our firmer, uh, form, firmer, firmer, firmer first round pick, oh, Barlow. But hey, we're looking good. That is one win down. I said we weren't going to sim the entirety of the playoffs tonight, but... Could tonight be the night? As Burnaby moves on to the next round once more. It's Vancouver that stands in our way. A 49 win Canucks team. I don't know if we're simming the rest of this right now, but God don't I want to.